what's up guys it's great to see you all again and if you're new here i'm patrick and this is where i ramble about tech and other stuff so the past couple of weeks have been all about the iphone 12. most tech youtubers including myself did at least one iphone 12 review and there's more coming with the iphone 12 pro max and the mini being released very soon so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on that anyway we all had some decent time with the iphone now and Sure, it's a great smartphone and a good camera, we know all that by now, but it also has this really amazing A14 Bionic chip. Theoretically, this chip should be powerful enough to run a MacBook Pro, so this got me thinking, how far can we push this and can we turn the iPhone 12 into a desktop computer? I recently got sent this really cool portable external monitor by Andy Sini, and I was thinking about interesting ways of reviewing it besides the here are the buttons and it's a very nice screen kind of thing. So this little iPhone desktop experiment seems to be the perfect occasion to see what it can do. Obviously, there's more than just the iPhone you can use with a screen, but for the purpose of this video, we will stick to the iPhone. So let's ramble. Hold up. So let's have a look at the external monitor first and get the specs out of the way so we can move on to the fun stuff. I already knew this company from their camera monitors and so I agreed to review it pretty much immediately. They're not sponsoring anything but they did send me this unit for free. But as you know by now, if something sucks, I will tell you. This is the WeMaxit 14 inch portable touchscreen. It's a 1920 by 1080 p full HD HDR IPS monitor. So I just said I would tell you if something sucks and there is something. The touchscreen doesn't work with iOS or macOS. So if you're on a PC or a newer model of Android, you will be able to use the touchscreen, but not with Apple devices, at least not yet. So what is left then is a really sleek, super light and very portable external monitor. It comes with its own case, which is nice, and you get some cables with it, like a USB-C to USB-C and an HDMI to HDMI mini. This last one is especially useful as most people don't own such a cable and you will need it to connect to the iPhone, but we'll get to that later. On the right side of the panel, you will find a mini HDMI port, two USB-C ports and a micro USB port. Both the HDMI and USB-C ports can be used for image and video and the USB-C port also doubles as a power input. So when using the screen with a powered device like a laptop or the iPad Pro inside the Magic Keyboard, the monitor will not need a separate power source, which means you only need a single USB-C cable to use it, which makes it ideal for coffee shop situations. On the left side, you will find the on and off switch, a menu toggle and the audio jack for your headphones. By the way, the monitor has built-in speakers on both sides. They're obviously not going to be the best speakers, but it's useful to have them. The menu itself has all the options you would expect from an external monitor, like picture, color, audio, and input controls. Since the iPhone still uses the lightning cable, you're going to need a few things to hook it up to this monitor. Most importantly, you're going to need this lightning to AV adapter. Without this, it won't work. The second thing you need is an HDMI to HDMI mini cable, but thankfully this comes with a screen. And lastly, since the iPhone can't be used for phantom power this way, you will need to power the screen separately by USB-C. You can use either a wall outlet or a simple power bank. Both will work just fine. And then obviously we're gonna need a mouse and a keyboard. And since iOS 13 came out, this has become very easy. You simply hook up a mouse and a keyboard via Bluetooth and you're all set. Make sure you turn on assistive touch so you can actually see your cursor. Now, what you'll notice is that some apps are optimized for use with an external screen like YouTube or Netflix, and I have to say they look absolutely stunning. The screen is very bright, and of course it makes a huge difference when compared to a much smaller screen like the iPhone. I mean, the iPhone 12 has a really nice OLED screen now, but that doesn't mean you want to be watching an entire movie on a tiny screen like that. But on this screen, it's no problem at all. So. I guess this would be really nice to take with you to a hotel and watch your own content or when you're at home in bed and you just want to get some Netflix in. Not everybody owns a tablet and laptops are bulky and they tend to get really hot. This thing is super light and very thin. And you can also turn your iPhone into a gaming console. As you probably know, it's very easy to hook up certain Bluetooth controllers to your iPhone like this Xbox One controller. 
The screen has a 60Hz refresh rate, which is not very high to most gamers, but since the iPhone 12 only has 60Hz as well, the games look perfectly fine on the screen. Now, what you've probably noticed is the black bars at the top and the bottom of the screen. They are there because the apps are not optimized for external monitors. For the moment, this is the case for most apps, and this becomes more relevant when we try to actually use it as a computer. So, we got our keyboard and our mouse connected, and we want to do some typing. So, let's set up Microsoft Word. As you can see, there's the black bars, and even though it works, it looks a bit crammed. Also, unlike the iPad, you won't be able to do any screen-by-screen -screen multitasking. And that's where today's sponsor, Shift Screen, comes in. Shift Screen is especially designed to use iOS devices with external monitors. It has a number of apps that are optimized to use with it, including some of my favorites like Trello and Slack, which I use for work. It also has its own full screen browser. So if I were to open Chrome or Safari just like this, I would have black bars. But with Shift Screen, you will get the full desktop experience. But what makes it even cooler and feel more like an actual computer is the fact that you can put Windows side by side. So I could have Trello open and I can add Slack so I can chat with my team. And I can also open a browser window all at the same time. It's really easy to resize each window so you could make one of them larger than the other. You can reposition them by simply dragging and dropping. And you can do this for up to six windows. I mean, that's pretty insane. And the widescreen dimensions of the Wii Max it are perfect for this. And then while playing around with the setup, I thought I would try a Zoom call since we're all using it so much these days for obvious reasons. And as I was using it, I thought, what if I could use the camera on the back of the phone? Nobody likes to use a selfie cam and the cameras on the back of the iPhone 12 are pretty amazing. And lo and behold, it works. I can still see the zoom interface, but I get to use the better camera. And besides the camera, there's another very clear benefit to all of this. It's called angles. We all know how smartphones make us look and nobody wants to be showcasing their double chin in a video call. So with this setup, all you need is a place to put or clamp your iPhone and your double chin will now have made room for that beautiful angle you love so much. All right, so a lot of things work and some don't. And of course, it's not perfect yet, but I really do believe that this is the future of computing. Chips and other internals of mobile devices are getting more and more powerful. And I can really imagine in the near future getting rid of laptops entirely, since most of us keep them on our desks in clamshell mode anyway. This way, you can carry your computer with you in your pocket and just hook it up to whatever screen. The iPad Pro is a few steps ahead in that direction over the iPhone, and it works even better with screens like this. And more apps on the iPhone are optimized for such use cases. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see the iPad Pro doing its magic with this external monitor. For more content like this, and if you're interested in my upcoming iPhone 12 mini and Pro Max reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell so you won't miss out on any of that. And of course, your sub would help the channel a great deal. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.